In this video, we're going to be discussing some of the more detailed anatomy of the C1 vertebra, also called the atlas. So first of all, why is this bone referred to as the atlas? Well, if you think back to Greek or Roman mythology, there was a guy named Atlas who carried the earth on his shoulders. And so if we think about the top of this bone here being the shoulders, and then the skull being the globe, so in the same way that Atlas carried the globe or the earth on his shoulders, this bone, C1, the atlas, is going to carry the skull on its superior surfaces right here, as we'll see in a few minutes. These are called facets. Now, the first thing we want to do before we start talking about any anatomical structures on this is orient ourselves with what is superior and what is inferior, and then what is anterior and what is posterior. Because depending on how you're thrown this bone, if it's isolated like this or this, it can be difficult to tell what is what. Now the first thing you should determine is what is superior and inferior. And the way you can tell that is by looking at these uh, somewhat flat regions called the facets. Now if we look at this part right here, we see two facets, one over here, one over here, if we flip it upside down, we see two more, but if we look at these two facets, notice that they're smaller than the two facets on this side right here. And the rule is with the atlas, the larger facets are on top. So because these are larger, that tells us we're looking at the superior part of the atlas. And then flipping this over, this would be inferior. Okay. Now that we know superior and inferior, we should determine anterior from posterior because knowing that will help us determine left from right. Okay? So the rule is, is that when you're looking at actually both the atlas and the axis, which is C2, we'll discuss that in the next video, that these facets are going to be closer to the anterior side. So that means up here, this would be anterior, and down here, these would be posterior, because the facets are further away from this point, making this posterior. They're closer to this point, making this anterior. So knowing anterior from posterior now can help us determine left from right. So here's anterior here, here's posterior down here. I'm going to rotate this a little bit, so we're kind of now looking from the back side. So we're actually looking at somebody's back. That means over here would be the patient's right, over here would be the patient's left. And that's going to help us name some of these structures. Okay, so the first structure we're going to look at is right here. So this bulge right here on the front side of this bone, the atlas, this right here is going to be your anterior tubercle. Okay. Now if we look at the posterior side right here, this bump right here, this is going to be the posterior tubercle. Okay? Now, each tubercle is associated with arches. So the arches that are coming off of the anterior tubercle are going to be the anterior arches. So this arch right over here would be the right anterior arch. This would be the left anterior arch. Now, com coming over here, this was the posterior tubercle. So this arch right here would be the right posterior arch. This one would be the left posterior arch. Okay, now one thing uh, that we talked about in a previous video was that most of these vertebrae are going to have what's called a spinous process. Okay? The posterior tubercle takes the place of the spinous process in the atlas. The atlas does not have a spinous process. However, it does have transverse processes. So if we look over here, this would be one transverse process. This would actually be the right transverse process over here. And then over here, this one would be the left transverse process. Now, each transverse process has an associated transverse foramen. So if we look over here, this would be the left transverse foramen. And coming back over here, this is the right transverse foramen. And collectively, they would be referred to as transverse foramina. Okay. Now let's take a look at the facets. So these larger facets, these were the ones that indicated we have the superior surface. Okay. Now this is the C1 vertebra. There is no vertebra higher than this. So what sits on top of the atlas? Well the skull does. And specifically the part of the skull that makes contact with these facets is going to be the occipital condyles of the skull, that is of the occiput part of the skull. So these facets are called the superior facets of the atlas. And sometimes if, you're, if you know you're talking about the atlas, you'll just shorten it to superior facets. So this one over here would be the right superior facet of the atlas. 
this one would be the left superior facet. And so therefore, when the skull sits on this, the left occipital condyle will sit in the left facet. The right occipital condyle will sit in the right facet. Okay. Now, kind of underneath these facets, we see that the atlas is thickened. Okay. So this thicker region right here, which is designed to be able to support the weight, that's why it's thicker, of everything above it, that is the skull, this thicker region is what's called the lateral mass. So over here would be the right lateral mass, and over here this would be the left lateral mass underlying the left facet, or superior facet I should say. Okay. Now we're looking at the inferior part. Okay, so let's actually kind of give some perspective here. So this right here is anterior, okay? So this is anterior, so this is the front of the body. So um, if you took away all the body parts, this would be like if you're looking directly on at somebody, they would be facing you. So this is anterior because it's closest to the facets. So this being anterior, over here, that would actually make this the patient's left, over here the patient's right, because it's flipped because you're looking at them face on. So right is over here. So when we look at these facets right here on the bottom, these are the inferior facets of the atlas. Or if you know you're referring to the atlas, it would be just inferior facets. And so this one over here, because this would be the patient's right side, this would be the right inferior facet, and this would be the left inferior facet. What's important to know about these inferior facets of the atlas is they're going to articulate with the superior facets of the bone directly beneath the atlas. That is the axis. So the axis, as we'll see, or C2 in the next video, is going to have superior facets similar to this. And so the right superior facet of the axis, C2, will articulate with the right inferior facet of the atlas. And the same thing goes for the patient's left side. Okay. So one more thing that I want to discuss here before we conclude this video. So we're going to go back to the original view. So here's our superior surface. Um, anterior is over here in the back. Here's posterior. So this over here is the patient's right. Over here is the patient's left. Okay. If we look near the lateral mass, uh, more on the medial side, we actually see this groove right here. There's a groove right here, sort of right at the base of the superior facet. This one's on the patient's left. There's another groove over here on the patient's right. The reason there's a groove there is, as we'll see later on, there's an artery that's actually going to sort of loop around this thickened region of the atlas and then go directly upwards. And that's actually what we call the vertebral artery. And there's two of them, a left and a right. So what we would see is actually that as the, in this case, the right vertebral artery is moving upwards, okay, and actually go through this transverse foramen and then sort of loop posteriorly, because if we're going in this direction, it's actually posterior, and then it's going to loop around and kind of hug this groove and then go upward toward the neck. And in fact, the vertebral artery is actually going to serve a lot of the structures in the neck. Eventually, the vertebral arteries, left and right, will fuse to form what's called the basilar artery, but that doesn't occur in, until you're actually in the head. Okay? So these are the structures of the atlas, more detailed structures, that is. Hopefully you learned something about the anatomy of it in this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.